Lucy, let's bring in MPs who have been listening to all this. Should Canada send fighter jets to strike ISIS targets in Iraq? What about Syria? Why is the government being tight-lipped about the mission? Joining me now in the foyer of the House, Aaron O'Toole, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade, Paul Dewar, NDP's Foreign Affairs Critic, and Ralph Goodale, Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party. Gents, good to see all of you. Mr. Hello. O'Toole, I'll start with you. Will the Prime Minister announce the details of a combat mission and an expanded mission to include humanitarian aid as well in the House tomorrow ahead of next week's debate? Uh, I heard what uh, Rosemary heard in terms of uh, Minister Van Loan saying that there will likely be a debate next week. The Prime Minister, Evan, has been clear uh, for well over a month that if Canada's role takes a combat uh, role in, in any form, it will be brought to the House for a debate and for a vote. Um, I hope to take part in that, uh, in that debate as someone that served in uniform and takes these uh, issues seriously. It, it is a time for a serious debate because there's a threat here, and not just to the religious minorities and, and people being killed, journalists beheaded, uh, re religious minorities attacked. There's been threats against Canada. Canadians, radicalized Canadians, have taken part and traveled there. So this is something that we can't just uh, close our eyes to. Canada's never taken a navel-gazing approach so to the world. why the vagueness, though? I mean, you, you got to admit, it has been like extracting teeth to find out the number of, of special forces on the ground, when there's going to be a debate, what the prime minister is considering. Uh, you know, on this program every day, there's been the messages have been very, very difficult to come out. Why the vagueness? I don't think there's been vagueness at all, Evan. You know, uh, there was a date put on to this advisory mission where up to 69 people were going to be deployed. Not all of them are there, but up to that level to see how advice could be given to Kurds on the ground, the Iraqi armed forces, to try and make sure that they take a defense themselves on the ground. There was a timeline set to that, and uh, we've, you know, we've got to take an approach where we're listening to our allies, uh, hearing how the U.S. led including with Gulf states, uh, airstrikes. Have they been having an impact? Are they cutting off supply lines, cutting off financing? Uh, it, is there a need for Canadian participation? And if there is some role where we can add uh, help to the effort, where Canada's role can be strategic and limited, okay, uh, so we you, should be listening to this. So what about ruling out? Has the government ruled out uh, participating in airstrikes in Syria? I know, uh, on, I think on your program, Evan, I saw reports of uh, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Tom Lawson, uh, leaving Cabinet the other day. So I know the government has asked for the military's assessment and has been speaking with our allies. And I think the Prime Minister uh, will be weighing those decisions and bringing to the House what he feels, as the deadline ends, uh, should be the next stage. And remember, when this deadline was set and our advisory role set, the Minister of Defence and the Chief of Defence Staff appeared at an all-party committee uh, to talk about the mission, and so the, this has been very deliberate. It's been steady, and okay, we're not, we're not rushing into any. Mr. Mulcair said he hasn't been briefed like they were in Afghanistan and Libya. Will opposition leaders be briefed as they were on those missions? Uh, I, I don't know. That's something you'll ask the Prime Minister, I think, Evan. But well, do you one, think they one thing should that's be clear. briefed. How about that one? It, one thing that's clear: the whole House should be briefed, Evan. I think. And uh, what's interesting the whole is ought Ms. To be briefed. Mr. Goodale was part of a government at the beginning of a 12-year, what ended up being a 12-year mission in Afghanistan, didn't bring it to the House for a vote, yet they're feigning outrage now. I, you know, the Liberal Party position on this has been flip-flopping already, and its leader you saw today with his frat boy antics, really making light of a serious situation like he did with Ukraine and Russia. Right, this well, is let, serious let me, issues let, and serious leadership's needed, Evan. Okay, l let me go to Mr. Goodell on that, and I'll get to you in a second, Mr. Dewar. Um, first of all, Will Justin Trudeau, will the Liberal Party, Mr. Goodell, would the Liberal Party support a combat mission? That would mean airstrikes in Iraq. Well, we don't know what the terms and conditions are. We've been asking for that information. Uh, Mr. Trudeau indicated uh, today in his, uh, in his uh, speech that uh, uh, we will wait to see what the government actually proposes. The onus is on the government to make the proposition. Uh, the, uh, I'm sure all Canadians will be anxious to know uh, what they have in mind, but their, the, their instinct, the, the, the vibes they've been giving off, uh, have certainly indicated that their, their, uh, their predilection is toward combat. And our question then is, okay, is that the highest and best use of available and limited Canadian resources? And what gets excluded 
when, when the government opts for combat. Uh, there are other alternatives. As the United States uh, uh, said in their public comments, it, it could be reconnaissance, it could be strategic airlift, uh, it could be training, it could be medical support. Uh, it but could you're be not a, ruling out that. We're, we're waiting to hear the proposition, and the government has not been forthcoming okay. in bringing that proposition forward. That's been, that's been the great frustration of Canadians uh, and, uh, and certainly members of Parliament. It, it appears that Mr. Harper is about to send Canadians into combat in a war in Iraq. It's up to him to make the justification for that proposition, which so he has not done. It's a serious while issue. Prime Ministers, while Prime Ministers in the United Kingdom and Australia have, Mr. Harper has not. All right. And France, UK, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, they've all sent fighter jets. But Mr. Goodell, your leader had a substantive speech about this, humanitarian aid. But then he made this remark, obviously a non-scripted remark. Uh, Thomas Mulcair has called it a juvenile joke. The Prime Minister's office called it disrespectful of the troops. Uh, let me show you what Mr. Trudeau said, and I want your, your view of this. Why aren't we talking more about the kind of humanitarian aid that Canada can and must be engaged in, rather than you know, trying to whip out our CF-18s and show them how big they are? He's trying to make a point about humanitarian aid. Was it appropriate for Mr. Trudeau to make that joke about the CF-18s? Well, it was a graphic remark, perhaps too graphic, but it does make the point about this government's predilection toward, toward combat to the exclusion of almost everything else. Bear in mind that a combat mi mission, when you're sending CF-18s halfway fair, around... It hasn't you, been to the exclusion of humanitarian aid. Uh, to, uh, We've been uh, doing uh, that as well, Evan. When, when, wait till you see the cost and wait till you see the public accounts a year or two down the road and how, and how humanitarian aid uh, drops and while the expenses of the combat okay, mission... But, 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 I want to get Mr. Dewar in there, but Mr. Goodall, real quick. But, Evan, was that a disrespectful a joke to the troops? In your view, was that disrespectful? It, there was absolutely no disrespect uh, intended or shown toward toward the troops. The the uh, the problem here is a government that's not forthcoming and won't answer the questions. That's right. that's where the disrespect is. Tell Canadians where this is going and okay. be honest and candid. Mr. Dewar, will your party support a combat mission if it is not sanctioned by the UN? Yes or no? We have said, Evan, over and over again, I've said it to you, that the, the priority has to be what we've been asked to do. And I note that uh, at the G7, uh, we had there was a statement that we all signed on to, uh, uh, our government did, that called on us to, to support a uh, humanitarian uh, mission to help those who are victims of sexual violence. I brought that up in the House today and I was ridiculed. The government just, you know, attacked me for bringing it up as if that was irresponsible. So you, got the, you have the government going after someone like me asking, are we going to do what we promised to do when it comes to helping those who are victims of sexual violence as if this wasn't a responsible thing to do or building uh, refugee camps for people who have fled who Mr. Baird, Minister Baird and myself saw and Minister Baird said, yes, we have to do something about, and there hasn't been an announcement on that. I hope to see that tomorrow. But here's the problem. You, no, you, you aren't. You haven't announced go, new go, money go ahead, on it. Mr. Deere. But what we need to see from the government is, is what is that part? Because we're concerned about the fact that the airstrikes are something that hasn't been thought through by the government and has actually delayed us doing what we said we were going to do, and that is to save lives. Because while they've been debating and, frankly, dithering over what to do on the humanitarian side in addition to what it was already announced, we could have been on the ground saving lives. So when it comes to airstrikes, we are very concerned because right now they're running out of targets. Is it going to be into Syria? And yes, unlike uh, Libya, where I frankly was involved with Mr. Layton, where we actually amended the motion, it was given to us. I worked with Minister Baird at the time. Mr. Layton and Mr. Harper worked together to amend that motion. We haven't seen that cooperation. Okay, but we haven't been the briefed. question and for so your party it will, is... It will be very hard to see us supported, Evan. I've told you that, and I can't okay, see us supporting enough. it at all. Well, how does the NDP answer the, the criticism that may come that said, you know, we absolutely need humanitarian aid for the crisis, but by the same token, look at the Rwanda situation. A million Rwandans killed by essentially machetes in a hundred days. If you don't stop the killing and you only do well, humanitarian aid, huh. then so well, if, if there wasn't a, a mandate to stop it, is there an We're obligation for Canada to stop totally the different. killing I know as about, well as do the Of course the there is, and there's a role for us to play, and I've already laid out what our role has, has to be, what we 
we committed to and we were asked to do. Uh, but careful, Evan, here, because what happened in, in Rwanda is not the same. We have forces on the ground who are protecting and holding northern Iraq. I was there in 2007. I know the terrain. I, was, I have people who I talk to on the ground, who are, who, people who are still in touch. So I think we be, be very careful. This is not Rwanda. We should be, uh, although providing the humanitarian support that we are asked to do right. so these people there, aren't going to become but, vulnerable to the excesses okay. of ten ISIS. Seconds, but, I know Mr. Ortua, jump in real quick. But, but Evan, there has to be security before aid can be provided. We're, doing, Absolutely. we're providing aid as well. This is a situation that there's a real threat that has to be addressed that we're working with allies on. And we have not rushed anything. The advisory role was not rushing. And the Prime Minister has always said it will be brought to the House, unlike what the Liberals did. And you said when Justin got onto unscripted remarks, Evan, every time he becomes unscripted, you see that he's not up for leadership. These oh, are serious nonsense. issues. Nonsense. This is not for no, joking. Okay. Evan, Evan, the fact of the matter is, uh, if, if the government opts for the, for the combat role for the CF-18s tomorrow, if that's what they, what, what they say, and that seems to be the direction of it all, the critical question is, is that the highest and best use of the limited resources that Canada has available? There have been budget cuts in the Department of National okay. Defense. And we'll have a debate on Procurement this, have deferrals. The liberals for procurement deferrals. The, the, chief, the, the senior officers are saying we need a pause in the, in the pace and, uh, of, uh, of Canada's military activity okay. uh, is this actually using our resources in the in the way that will make the biggest a difference I'm sorry I, I got we're gonna have here. a debate and vote that we called for 30 days ago so I'll, well, I'll give that that's we a finally happening and it's too bad I think it wasn't think earlier next week yeah, I gotta we'll leave it there gentlemen we'll but there'll about. be lots of time to debate this and I always appreciate your all of your passions on this Aaron O'Toole Paul Dewar and Ralph Goodell gentlemen thanks for being on the program thank you